Yeah, she got yeah, it. Yeah, we just did the dictionary. I was like, oh, my God. No, we were here. I know. Well, that's me. Right here. Did you see the movie? I'm going to take a look at the top. Yo, soy easy. I love your hair. Oh, Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Where is it? Um, so the optimization. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just put the back of the Do anybody still got eight or the Cause one twenty. Oh, I got a six. Oh, yeah. that no, 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 no. I wasn't fired because I was sitting next to that man over there. there. Yeah. Josh. Yeah. Is it true that like, Josh just kept distracting me? Yeah. Yeah, you didn't. I was well, I had a yeah, you didn't get anything out of that class. Huh? You didn't get anything out of that class. I know, but I laughed a lot. You got it. Yeah, that's true. That's a lot. That's the question. You were the only person ever. Oh, yeah. Here. You were the only person saying anything. He literally called on Mariana. Yeah. Do you had that one point where he was like, that loose connection, that loose guy? And Jaden was like, what is he talking about? I was like, dude, nobody has said anything for so long that he literally thinks we're no longer connected. Yeah. I'm like, no, we're still here. The second part. Like, yep, we're good. And then one point he's like, any questions? And I'm just like, That's nope, we're all good. He's like, oh, okay. my God. <laughs> Yeah, I started. Okay, so how many of you guys have started registering at this point? The third class. The third class. Yeah, the fourth. Oh, because you're an athlete. You have to register early. Yes. Um, so, at, but hopefully at this point, all of you have connected up with your advisors, you've gotten your registration code, yeah. for sure should have an idea of what you're doing in January, um, uh, and a good idea of what you're doing in um, the spring semester, and hopefully, I think most of your advisors required you to work on your four-year plan and beyond the detail that it was due for, for this class. So your next reflection for next week, like, because by then you all should be registering, is to complete your four-year plan, your, your first draft of your, your four-year plan. Um, so what I wanted to talk about today um, is some of the uh, different options that you might be thinking about as you think about not just this year but future years um, and courses and and degrees and, and so forth. Yes. Um, are we supposed to meet with our advisor before our registration opens? Um, that's supposed to be how you get your registration code. You know, <laughs> if, you came to the big group, if, if you came to the big group advising that counted as meeting with an, an advisor. Got it. So uh, you didn't necessarily have to meets with your specific advisor. Mm -hmm. um, that's not true for everyone. I know if you are a cybersecurity major, Dr. Stanley insisted yeah. that you specifically meet with him because he wants to make sure that he gets to know you and that he makes sure that he talks about some things that are specific to the cybersecurity degree program and so forth. Um, if you're a computer engineering student, um, I've met with all of you. Um, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, but there is a little bit more flexibility in the, the other degrees um, as far as specifically meeting with your advisor. Um, so let me go ahead. Um, I don't know if you can tell from this, but I'm at the uh, registrar's um, uh, page. And you can get to this from, I should have showing everyone how to get here. This is an important uh, page. Uh, I got here. 
from the My Taylor portal by clicking on Departments, this drop down right here, and going to the Registrar link right there. And that just brought up the Registrar homepage. Um, and then I specifically went to the catalog link here. Um, so you can get the entire catalog, but I'm just going to get the subset that does, deals with computer science and engineering here because that's what I want to talk about. Um, that's probably a little small. Huh? That's a little better. Um, So the first thing I want to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, are the different major offerings that are available to you. Um, because I was in the senior advice session with the engineering students, and I wasn't in the advice session with the computer science students, um, can you give me a quick um, overview? How much did the seniors talk about these different options with you? I don't think not at all. So. <laughs> Which one was it? <laughs> all right. So let me let me talk about this first. Um, the the first thing I want to say is the only big decision you need to make right now between these majors is whether or not you're doing computer engineering or you're doing everything else. Okay. So you don't have to feel like you're in some sort of big hurry right now. If you're not sure, you should have already been enrolled in computer engineering because moving from computer engineering to computer science is doable. The opposite direction, moving from computer science to computer engineering at this point means you're already here at least another semester if not two. Okay, so um, that decision is the only decision that is essentially should have already been made by this point in time. Um, and so, you, what we're talking about now is something that you just need to be aware of, that these options are coming uh, available and you need to be thinking about what kinds of decisions are coming on the way and how they start to differentiate themselves from, from each other. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the computer engineering because I've met with the computer engineers and I'm going to talk about the rest of these degree programs instead here. All right. Um, and it looks like we have a bunch of majors, but we can kind of break them uh, or combine them together into smaller categories to make it a little bit easier for, for you to understand. All right, so um, the, the first thing I'm going to do is you can see anytime there's this slash systems right here, there's a similarly named major with a BA next to it. That's true right here, and that's true right here. So in a certain sense, uh, or right here. Um, in a certain sense, um, those are kind of like the same major with one little twist, that being the systems program. Um, so let me talk about that first. If you're thinking you want to do a digital media degree or a computer science degree, why you would choose the BS versus the BA. Um, if it, and this is true of every BA on campus, if you want to, you can add the systems component to it. So we have art systems, we have English systems, we have biblical literature systems, we have, um, we even have Spanish systems, um, and, uh, which sounds weird when you hear how the replacement works. Um, and so that's true of computer science too. We have computer science systems. And with the, the way this works in the major is that instead of taking the foreign language requirements that every BA on campus has, you replace those degree requirements with a separate set of degree requirements that allow you to do um, information systems and data analytics. Okay, And so those of you who are already in CAS 102, you're getting a lot of exposure to what that means and, and what um, systems thinking is and, and how you go uh, about doing the kinds of things that are related to, to systems. So you take the BA and the foreign language requirements, or the BS and the systems requirements. Um, so that's, that's a way to kind of group some of, of these together. All right. Um, 
The other way you can get a BS is just this straight uh, computer science degree. So let me differentiate the computer science with systems BS from the computer science standalone BS degree. The, the best way for me to think about this, hopefully it helps you, is that the computer science uh, standalone degree is designed to um, put you in a trajectory where you're anticipating either doing something like graduate school or you're anticipating doing something that is very technically oriented that you're, um, you're designing how systems work, why they, they work, and you would want to be the kind of like the, the lead architect on a, a system in your company, all right? Um, versus the computer science systems is designed to, to work um, in a wide number of, of companies um, but, and, and do interesting computer science work, but maybe not always have the, um, the most foundational uh, theoretical understanding for, for why the things work the way they do. We, um, so as an example of the difference between the two, in computer science systems, you have to take one of the following three courses, whereas in the computer science standalone, you have to take all three of these courses. They are language structures, algorithm design, and theory of computation. Okay, so you get some theoretical background with the uh, computer science systems, you get a depth of, com of theoretical background with the standalone PDF. Okay. Another difference between the two is the systems, you get, you, you have to take a, a practicum, which is basically an internship that you get credit for. Um, so you have to do some papers during the summer while you're taking your internship. In the standalone, instead of doing the, the internship, you do two semesters of research, um, where you work on a project with another faculty member on something that's really interesting to the two of you. Um, so those are kind of the differences between the, the two of, of them. Uh, the cybersecurity major uh, is, um, again, a very valid, sound computer science degree with uh, emphasis on understanding security issues. So you need to understand the underlying computer science so that you can defend and protect and build systems that then defend and protect against malicious actors. Um, so instead of and instead of adding the systems curriculum to get the BA, you add the cybersecurity curriculum to get the BS. All right. So those are technically four different computer science degrees, but they're they're um, they're very connected with each other. Uh, the digital media sets of degrees are um, degrees that are designed. Um, hopefully, you've been talking with. Dr. Denning, if you're interested in these, and he can do a better job of describing them than I can, but they're designed to be bridging computer science and artistic fields. That so you're understanding aesthetic considerations, you know, why an artist does the way um, they, they do things, uh, but you're also building tools, not just using the tools, but building the tools that the artists use to accomplish the tasks that they're uh, attempting to, to use. Uh, and then, again, we can add the systems curriculum to that as well. So what that means is if I uh, scroll down here a little bit and I show you the computer science BA degree, and I scroll down just a little bit more and show you the computer science systems, you can see that the systems degree literally says, do the BA major right here plus these systems requirements. Okay, and, the, and so let's go back to, to these real quick. A lot of these 
classes are going to be classes that all you take, no matter which one of those degrees I talk about. You all um, will be in 102 or 109, depending upon if you're computer science or computer uh, cybersecurity. You're all in 103 right now. You all are either in 120 right now or got uh, it wavered through an AP or something similar to, to that. Uh, you should all be anticipating 121 uh, in, the, in the spring then, if, if you're in 120 now. Um, again, I think I told you that you should anticipate doing 143 in, in January. So there's this common set of classes that you're, you're all doing together. Um, and, and one of the big reasons is this 121 is the prerequisite for most of the rest of the classes. Uh, so you're going to be taking these, these classes together as freshmen, and, th and then it becomes as sophomores when you start to say, oh, this might be interesting to me, that might be interesting to me, I, I might look into that more. Um, and, uh, and so that, those are the, the 100 level classes. Everyone has to take computer network security. Everyone has to take, oh, no, I'm sorry. Digital media does not have to take network security. All right. Um, everyone has to take multi-tier web application development. All right. Everyone has to take data structures and algorithms. So these are some sophomore level classes that you should expect to take. Um, most people take 243 and 265 in fall of their, their sophomore year. Um, and then 284, ICS. I know that you guys heard about that class um, from the senior. Um, it's designed to be taken uh, as a, a sophomore so that you can take the advanced classes and you can get a very good perspective of kind of where you want to head. Do you like this low-level programming stuff? Is it interesting to you? Does that make sense to you on, on how the computer works in a more fundamental way? Or do you like being up, up higher? There's no um, judgment on either way, but that's a great class for you to make that determination and determine where, where you want to head. Um, and then notice the next class in the core requirement is senior project. And the reason why is now you're kind of free to start taking classes that are interesting to you. Classes that um, you think will be beneficial to you as you start working. Um, and, and so there's not a lot of intermediate classes between that sophomore year and, and your senior year uh, that you have to take. Um, but if you look at the catalog, you'll see that we do offer a lot of 300 level classes. Scroll down to them. Right, here we are. Algorithm design, network security 2, data visualization, data communication, missions computing, software engineering, database, computer graphics, computer vision, natural language processing, computer architecture. So there's quite a few classes in that 300 range, um, but you get to choose which ones you're interested in. That's your chance to really make the major be what is interesting to, to you. Um, and and uh, I would encourage you to do that. If you, if you look at a lot of these classes, I'll go up, you can see 121. 121, 121, 121, 121, 121. That's, that's your gateway into most of the rest of the classes in the curriculum. Occasionally, it might be another class, like if I scroll back down here a little bit. You might see two, uh, ICES, you might see 265 right here. But for the most part, 121 is the class. After you take that, your options are, are really 
open for wide for, for you to, to take. Okay? And so you don't have to feel like you have to make this decision. Oh, which one of these four um, oops, wrong direction. Which one of these um, four computer science degrees or digital media degrees or computer engineering degrees do I need to figure out what I'm doing right now? When you're working on your four-year plan, just put in, hey, I want to take a computer science elective. I'm, I'm interested in artificial intelligence, or I'm interested in security. Um, maybe you don't know if you want to do cybersecurity or not. Taking, taking the um, computer network security class as a sophomore will be a great chance for you to explore that better. I'm not sure if I want to do digital media or not. Um, taking, in that case, Scroll down to that because it is pretty different. Okay. You know, taking some of these art classes um, in addition to these computer science classes can, can help you ascertain whether or not that's something that, that you want to do or not. You know, should I take visual communication um, or where is there should be another one there. Um, uh, or the those one credit classes where you use Illustrator, or Photoshop, InDesign, and so forth, give you a good idea of is this uh, a good fit for you or, or not. But you see, you got these same classes: 103, 120, 121, 143, 243, 265. You you got these same shared classes with each other to allow you to have that exploration as you're trying to figure out exactly where you want to, to land in, um, in your time here. Um, oh, I actually get 2D design here, that's why I couldn't find it. Um, let me just, uh, let me try to give you a, a brief summary of what some of these classes are. So you can have an idea of, is this something that I might be interested in doing? All right. Um, so I'm going to start here in um, cost 320 up there. Algorithm design. So um, you've been learning in 120 how to write Python programs. You've been learning how to solve problems. Algorithms are the language of problem solving for computer science. Right? This is the set of steps that we follow in order to solve problems. And so with algorithm design, it's oriented primarily around how can you do this effectively and efficiently over a lot, lot, wide class of problems that you commonly encounter. So you kind of build up a set of problem solving strategies that you're going to be able to utilize over and over again in a number of different uh, problem domains. Uh, in addition to that, you talk about how do you effectively compare two algorithms with each other. So I don't know if you've um, talked about, or how about this? When, when you solve a problem and you've been really proud of it, and then you watch Dr. White go through a solution. You're like, wow, that's a great, I never thought of doing that before in that way. That's really interesting, right? There's more than one way to solve a problem, right? And you might want to be able to say that this way of solving a problem is better or more effective at solving it than this other way. And so algorithm designs can, gives you a language for being able to compare solutions different algorithms independent of having to run it on your computer. So you can say, no matter what computer this runs on, this algorithm is fundamentally better than this other type of algorithm, which is a cool thing to, to be able to do. Or they're indistinguishable from each other. They're effectively the, the same as, as each other. All right, so this is the second computer uh, security class right here, um, and it just keeps uh, broadening your uh, exposure to security and how to solve problems. 
and get you ready for all of the advanced cybersecurity classes, like reverse engineering, like um, forensic, digital forensics, um, and so forth. So data visualization is a new class. We just offered it for the first time last year, um, and that was gone when we offered it. So um, I know just a little bit of what it's supposed to be, but the idea is um, that if you think about, uh, if you've heard of the term machine learning, um, one of the big requirements of machine learning is to go through massive amounts of data. And because you're trying to um, make sense of, of that data. Uh, well, with machine learning, you're having the computer try to make sense of that data. With data visualization, you're trying to take that data and make sense of it as a human. You're trying to put it into a way of representing it that can uh, communicate effectively the massive amount of information in a meaningful way to make decisions, uh, to learn, as, as people and, and so forth. So um, that's the type of things that data visualization will focus on. Um, algorithm design is traditionally taught by Dr. Denny. Data visualization was taught by Dr. Nurkla. Um, data communication sometimes is, is called networking. So how do you build a computer network? Um, effectively. Uh, there's a lot of things to, to consider uh, from something as simple as when you communicate uh, a message like we were talking about last week, it can get corrupted. How do you notice that corruption? How do you fix that corruption? Um, how do you make sure that you know where you're trying to send that communication to? Um, how, how do I know that I'm that when I say www.google.com, that when I make that search request, it goes to their servers and not to um, some Amazon servers or to Taylor's servers, right? That it gets directed in, in the right way. So how do you build a, a network that facilitates all the kind of communication that at this point you guys just expect to be able to do. That, that if you had a computer that couldn't communicate with any other computer, you'd probably be very frustrated with it. Um, because it's not nearly as helpful as when it gets connected to the rest of the world. Missions Computing is a really cool course. It's only offered in January. Um, currently, it's only offered every other year. I would love it if so many people wanted to enroll in this class that we had to offer it every year. This class is a class where we intentionally meet up with a missions organization somewhere around the world. You heard Dr. Nurkula talk about it in his introduction last week, where students have gone to places like Thailand, and uh, Hong Kong, and Cuenca, Ecuador, and um, Carlisle, England, and so forth, working with uh, organizations like Operation Mobilization, Wycliffe Bible Translators, um, working with uh, a local church in Cuenca to build uh, basically um, church software that is um, not just written in English, but it's uh, internationalized, so it, it, in that, their case, it's Spanish, but they're, they've continued developing that software and adding translations, I think, in, in Chinese and in, in other languages as well, that it's not just some Americanized uh, piece of church software, but that it's, it's truly internationalized. Um, and so this is a chance to, every one of you has to do a CC class, right? A cross-cultural class. This is an opportunity to not just do a generic cross-cultural class that anyone in campus can do, but one where you can specifically say, I'm going to have a cross-cultural experience that directly ties to my computing discipline. And I'm going to see how I can make a difference in the 
uh, missions community with my computing background. Um, so that's supposed to be going on this year, as you might imagine. <laughs> We're not taking a trip, so it's going to be a little bit modified this, this year. But I would anticipate um, it's next going to be offered in, in your junior year. I would love it if, like I said, we could offer it even in, in your sophomore year. But don't anticipate having this available during your senior year uh, right now. Yeah, it's only offered during J term. Only offered during J term, yeah. So that's what this class is right here. So when would the next time that it's, it's J term every other year? Yeah, so right now, if you want to put that in your schedule, you should plan on it being January of 2023. Because it's being offered in January 21. All right. Software engineering is a class where we, we investigate how do we take engineering principles and apply them to computing so that we can build reliable systems, that we can understand um, what works and what doesn't work, that we can make a plan for a group of people to together build up a, a system. Um, so in, um, in systems, you talk about how do you, this, how do you get requirements and how do you build a system according to those requirements. Um, but this is going to talk about um, how do you um, structure then your plan for meeting those requirements in such a way that you can be sure that when you deliver your product that it is going to um, meet those requirements. So you'll talk about things like testing. You'll talk about things like um, being able to um, recognize when you have a, a, a bug and, and how do you um, communicate this effectively with product management um, and your customer. They'll talk about things like <coughs> um, agile development um, and, and so forth. Database systems is um, how do you properly um, not build a database, but use a database as part of your data storage solution for a problem. So you'll talk about relational databases, you'll talk about SQL um, in more detail than you thought possible, uh, but you might also talk about some other types of database technologies that are known as things like NoSQL and, and so forth. Computer graphics is a study of how do you get the computer to draw something, um, given uh, maybe a model. So, um, and and so you want to do that efficiently and beautifully. You might talk about things like um, ray tracing versus um, raster graphics. Um, which basically is um, treating your screen like a, a, a picture that you take on your phone. How do you get it to, to look that way? Um, this could be a whole series of classes. You could probably have a degree just in computer graphics if you want. Dr. Uh, I should say, Dr. Um, Stanley teaches software engineering. Dr. Nerkula teaches database. Dr. Denning teaches computer graphics. Computer vision, Dr. Denning also teaches, and he likes to say the difference between computer vision and computer graphics is what direction you're, you're driving the engine. So in computer graphics, you're trying to get something from the, uh, that you have, that you know what you want it to show on the screen. Computer vision is you've got a picture and you want to figure out what it is that you, do, you have a picture of. Right, so it's the same thing, but going in the opposite direction. One, you know what you have, and you want to generate a picture of it. One is you have a picture, and you want to figure out what you have. Okay, so uh, it, it's uh, it's very interesting, very useful. Uh, again, part of the artificial intelligence kind of landscape, because if you have things like robots uh, or uh, driverless cars or all these other things you're going to have to take advantage of computer vision because you have to figure out where you are in the world and you make sure you don't run over people or run into walls or all these kind of things. Um, 
that are important. Uh, mobile application development. Um, we haven't caught that in a while because we don't have bandwidth to do that, but we, we, that's um, been both an iPhone and an Android development class in the past. Um, natural language processing is a class where we try to um, ascribe meaning to uh, language. Oftentimes that's written test, text. So you, you type something in and the computer tries to understand what that means. This, this is the same type of thing that if you think of Siri or Google Assistant or Alexa use, this is a huge part of what they need to be able to do what you ask when you do voice commands, right? They have to understand what your request is when you're speaking that command to the machine. So they actually have to do two steps. First, they have to turn your speech to text, and then they have to translate that text into something of meaning for, for you to be able to um, get the computer to do what you want to do. Um, so Dr. Nurkla teaches that. He's got a linguistics background, and so that comes in very handy as well. Computer architecture is a class that I teach, um, and this is understanding how do you build a computer at the, the most fundamental level. How do you put together the transistors and the bits and the bytes to get it to say that, oh, I'm supposed to add these two things, or I'm supposed to send data from here to there, and what, uh, whatever. Um, maybe, the, maybe the coolest class in the curriculum, uh, but I'm a little biased. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Uh, language structures is a class where you get exposed to other programming languages. I know when I saw a lot of the questions that you guys submitted, one of the frequent questions that got submitted was, what's your favorite programming language? Or what programming language should I know? So I know that for some of you, this is just a naturally interesting idea. So the idea is, when when you learn a new programming language, especially if that programming language is different from other programming languages you've learned in the past, it presents new ways of solving problems. Because just like uh, when I speak English, there's certain ways that I can express myself naturally, but there are some ways that are difficult for me to express because English kind of structures the way I can speak. But if I speak a different language, foreign language, um, it may make it easier to say something that was difficult in English and vice versa. Something that was um, easy to speak in English might be difficult in this, this other language. The same is true with computer languages. The way we approach problems, the way we approach solutions becomes um, more natural in that language than another. So this is kind of a survey of different types of languages. That's the most important thing. Not just learn another language that's almost the same as Python but learn another language that's intentionally very different from Python, that has different ways of thinking and different solutions that you have available to you. Uh, so very cool, you talk about um, functional languages, you talk about truly object-oriented languages, you talk about logic languages, um, and then you, for your last project, you actually um, build your own little mini language that you try to implement. Dr. Denning is that class. Your practicum, like I said, is basically um, your, one of your internships. You, you credit on that. Advanced project is not ever listed in the um, available classes because it's a class that you get together with another faculty member and say, hey, wouldn't it be cool if I worked on fill in the blank? I'd really like to do that. Are you willing to help me do that? That's what an advanced project is. Get, a, get another faculty member excited about your idea, let you work independently on it, and you're off to the races. Okay? Very cool option for, for all of you. Digital forensics is a security class. Trying to, just like if you watch CSI and forensics is trying to figure out what happened, right, to, to understand who done it. This is that part of trying to understand what happened on our electrical systems. 
you know, trying to find files that were deleted, trying to find who uh, made them, when they were made, uh, what their contents were, try to, if they were encrypted, find the encryption key so you can decrypt it, um, and so forth. That's what forensics is. As you might guess, Dr. Stanley teaches that class. Operating systems is a class that I teach, um, and its name is very well descriptive. We talk about how to build an operating system, why operating systems are built the way the way, and why they work in that manner, and, and um, how you can, therefore, write programs to take advantage of your operating system, or build your own if you're really ambitious. Um, surfaces and modeling is taught by Dr. Denning, and it's a class where you actually try to build a world, a three-dimensional world, um, and have the computer then build that, that you know, design, you can operate in it, um, and um, it's kind of like the next step after computer graphics. Now, instead of just having a picture that you want to draw, you have a camera and you have a full three-dimensional world that you want to move and manipulate in. Um, animation is also what you, you expect from a computer's perspective. You describe, I want this scene, and I want this scene, and how do you generate all the pictures in between those different scenes that are, are nice and seamless with each other. Uh, both of those last two classes, software, uh, um, um, surfaces of modeling and animation are taught by Dr. Denning. Um, the reverse engineering and analysis class is taught by Dr. Stanley, and it is how do you even if you don't have the software, the source code, how do you figure out how the software works? Um, this is really helpful. Um, many of you may know, but we've got a project that we've been ongoing with Lockheed Martin for some number of, of years now, and uh, um, analyzing malware. And let me tell you that malware authors don't always like to share their source code with you, right? So if you want to figure out how the malware works, you might have to reverse engineer it to figure out why it, why it works the way it is. The, that's also true um, if you're trying to figure out, um, if you're doing what's called a white hat, white hat hacker, where you're trying to find security flaws before the malicious people do. You're going to have to reverse engineer the software to figure out why Mac or um, iOS works the way it does, why Windows works the way it does, why Chrome, uh, Chrome browser works the way it does. You're not getting the source code for all those different pieces of software, but if you want to figure out what's wrong with them, you're going to have to reverse engineer it um, and, and figure that out. Dr. Denning, uh, Dr. Stanley does a really cool thing. He's like, well, we'll explore this um, at least from the beginning. At, uh, we're going to reverse engineer how some games work and, and figure out how to cheat at them. Because cheating at games is the same, figuring out how to cheat at games is basically the same thing as trying to figure out how to break all these other tools as well. So it can be, it can be fun while, while you're learning. Um, 433 is the same as 333, except it's for seniors. So 333 is for juniors, 433 is for seniors. There's not much real difference between the two. So if you're taking it as a junior, you take 333. If you're taking it as a senior, you take 433. Well, theory of computation is a class where you understand um, what the um, inherent capabilities of a computer are. Okay. Um, some of the best professors, not at this university, but in general, who teach this class, uh, don't even have computers on their desks. Because this is not about how do you program a computer. It's what is possible to even think about programming a computer. Some of you, for your computer pioneer paper, talked about um, Turing. And you talked about a Turing machine named, named after him. Basically, what he was able to discover is what the most capable com machine um, no matter how it's built, 
the, these are the types of problems that it can build and can be reduced down to this type of machine. All other computers are, are equivalent in capability to the Turing machine that he designed in the 30s. Um, you cannot build a more capable machine than the one he conceived in that, that paper. Okay. So it turns out, with theory of computation, you talk about problems as well. Not just computers, but problems. And you discuss, are there problems that are unsolvable by computers? And the answer is yes. Um, and you can prove it. One of the first ones um, was called, uh, that was learned about was what's called the halting problem. And basically, you cannot design an algorithm whose input is some other computer program and whose output is supposed to be this simple. It's a yes or no answer, and it will tell you yes or no, does this program halt? Will it stop running at some point in time? You cannot write a program, you cannot write a program to answer that question. Yes? Is there a proof for that? Or yes. There is. There is. And you will, I guarantee you'll discuss it in, in that class. Which is a cool thing to think about. And that's just an example of a problem that sounds easy, but we can't do that. There are other program, there are other problems that you can talk about that you can solve them, but they take um, they take so much time that they're not practically solvable. Um, and those are known as NP complete problems. Um, this class is being taught this fall, um, and it is being taught by an adjunct, um, Dr. Hipschman. Um, parallel distributed computing is um, taught by Dr. Nurkula. It's in every other year course. I should have said what's wrong for every other year course. Um, computer architecture, language structures, natural language processing, Operating systems, those are our every other year courses. So if you want to take them, you need to make sure you put them in the right spot in, in your four-year plan. Uh, this is being taught this semester right now, parallel distributed computing, as is computer architecture. <laughs> Operating systems and language structures are being taught next spring. And as you can see here, language, natural language processing is spring a lot. Of so that would be next spring. Um, parallel distributed computing. How do you build, um, how do you design programs that you need more than one computer to solve? They're too big to solve with a single computer. So you need to put together multiple com computers to address solving the problem. Um, and what new issues do you have to deal with? Because now you're talking about coordinating computers to solve the problem. It's hard enough to write a program to solve it with one computer, but now um, you have to work together cooperatively in some manner to solve a problem. Um, and you have to think about new ways of doing that without getting into trouble. Um, directed research is like an uh, advanced project, except it's more research oriented. Research one and two are required for the standalone CS program. Um, uh, senior, senior engineering project one, two, and three are a sequence of courses that every computer engineering student needs to take to graduate. Everyone else takes this senior project class right here. Um, uh, everyone takes the capstone class, so I won't go into that. Uh, and then there's a systems class. They're super cool too. Um, but I don't have time to talk about those anymore. Um, if you have questions about any of these classes, talk to me, talk to the professor who I said teaches these classes. For a lot of the systems classes, that would be Dr. or Professor Roller, um, with the exception of um, machine learning, which is Dr. White. Or, um, Operations research, which is myself. 
So again, your uh, reflection, you haven't had a reflection for the past two weeks, you'll have a new reflection for this week, is to just finish up your four-year plan. All right? That's what you need to do for, for this week's reflection. All right? Have a good week. Yes? Can you post the reading assignment for next Friday? Yes. Today? Yes. I will, I'll I'll already, it's the next two chapters of your book. Uh, 24 and 25. 24 and 25. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I thought I had posted it earlier. I saw, uh, I'm sorry, it took me a while to post yeah, it. Just to that, was, that was my, my problem. Yep. Would, would that be okay if you like submitted it by tonight? So yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll definitely get flexibility since that was my issue. Okay, well, thank you. All right, have a great weekend, everyone.